Uh, good morning, everybody. Sheriff Matt Oller here at Audrain County, Missouri. Actually, we're up in Monroe County at the weekend place, and uh, it's a beautiful day in East Central Missouri. i um, expecting uh, some rain. Might hear a little thunder in the background. We're expecting some rain, uh, maybe a small storm here this morning. But uh, I wanted to, uh, as most of you all know from my past few videos, uh, I had uh, 40, let's see, 42 days ago, uh, I had spinal fusion surgery, uh, L4, L5S1, and uh, I've been trying to recover from that, which has been a challenge. But uh, anyway, in some of my previous videos, we talked about shoulder holsters. I think the last uh, holster video or gun video that I did was a uh, proper draw stroke from a shoulder holster without flagging yourself. And back before I had surgery, you guys might remember I did a gun review on the Koenig TP9 SFX, which is this pistol. I've got the Hollow Sun 503C comp uh, sight on it. And uh, just to let you know, the magazine is loaded, and there's a reason that uh, we're going to have a loaded magazine, but the pistol itself is empty. See the chamber's empty. Uh, magazine well's empty. Uh, we're going to close the action and put the magazine back in it. And the reason we're doing that is for the weight. Uh, there's a big difference between this is a 20 round magazine, a uh, big difference between 20 rounds and a gun weight wise and an empty gun weight wise, especially when it has a 20 round capacity. But uh, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, an honest review of the Gunfighters Incorporated or Gunfighters Inc. Spectre shoulder holster for this particular gun. Um, and the reason I have this, most of y'all know I've said a thousand times or at least a hundred times or at least to you guys, I've said it 10 or 12 times. I'm a leather guy. Uh, I like leather. My go-to is typically Galco. Uh, Galco Miami Classic shoulder holster or, um, and I've worn shoulder holsters for the last oh, four or five years, especially in plain clothes because uh, of back issues. Uh, and of course, which eventually led to surgery 42 days ago. But uh, of course, in uniform, I wear a gun belt. Uh, but right now, I can't even wear a regular belt. So uh, shoulder holsters are kind of my thing, but uh, at least for the moment. But uh, about three weeks before I had surgery, I ordered this uh, because I wanted, uh, I really like the TP9 SFX, the Koenig gun. And I really wanted to be able to try to carry it. Um, really solid shooting gun. It's very comfortable. I like it a, a, a lot. Uh, it, now it is a lot of weight because by the time you factor in the gun, the 20 round magazine and two magazines, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second, you're talking about 60 rounds. That's over a box of ammo plus the weight of the gun plus the weight of the holster. So, uh, but anyway, when I started looking around, the only reputable company that was making a shoulder holster for the TP9 SFX was Gunfighters Incorporated. Now, full disclosure, I do have another Gunfighters Incorporated holster. I have the Ronin uh, outside the waistband that I bought for my Kimber 1911, and it, it is probably the best plastic holster. And I'm not a plastic holster guy, but the best plastic holster I've ever put on. And I, I enjoy it quite a bit, and it conceals well, and I, I actually carry it uh, whenever, whenever I could, I did anyway. Uh, I've had it for, I don't know, four or five years probably. And, and it's always worked out well. So with this Spectre shoulder holster, we're going to talk about a couple of things that I really like and a couple of things that I don't necessarily like. Uh, one of the things I like, I was not expecting comfort out of a plastic and nylon shoulder holster. But across the back that connects the two uh, sides of the harness is uh, this, this elastic type stuff. Uh, it's almost like a neoprene, but not, I don't know. Uh, but, but that rides right across uh, the middle of your back between your shoulder blades, and it actually adds quite a bit of comfort. Uh, it actually adds quite a bit of give. So uh, the other thing I like is it has this that goes around your back. Um, so when this thing is on, this would go around uh, your back, and uh, if you bend over, it keeps that, that holster from, from rocking forward um, and maybe coming out of your shirt or whatever. As most of you know, I typically wear a cover-up. I don't have one with me, but I typically wear like a large fishing shirt, button-down fishing shirt as a cover-up. And 
uh, if I wear one of my leather holsters and I bend over or something, sometimes the gun will flop just enough to where the butt comes out of the out of the shirt. And uh, you know, again, I'm not. I don't necessarily care too much about a little bit of printing. Uh, some people do, but I don't. But anyway, I'm going to put this on. Now, the, the around the back strap makes it a little different to put on. You can't put it on just like a regular holster. You kind of got to put it on like a, like a heavy coat. But it goes on pretty easy. And it does have tie-downs, uh, which I typically do not wear tie-downs. But uh, this one you need tie-downs for, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But I've just been, when I had it before surgery, I put those tie-downs around my belt and then back up to itself, right? So it's got this hook. Uh, I would take this, stretch it around my belt, and then just hook this back on itself, uh, like kind of like a belt loop. Uh, right now, I'm just hooking this around my back brace because anytime I'm up on my feet, I have to have a brace on. So uh, it works pretty good just to slip it over the bottom uh, of the back brace, and uh, it serves as a fairly decent tie down. So now that we've got this on, uh, I, I will say that I do like the offside mag pouch. Uh, it, it's, it is, it's not super tight, but they're not going to fall out, right? Uh, it would take, I mean, you'd have to hit it pretty hard or something weird would have to happen before these fall out, but they're plenty easy to, to get out. And they're faced in a direction that, uh, is, is intuitive to grab. Uh, they're actually faced up a little bit. So you're right there. I like that. Um, I like the tie downs. I typically do not wear tie downs uh, with a leather holster, but leather holster is different, right? Because leather eventually stretches. Uh, and it, when leather conforms to your body, there's nothing like the feeling of leather. But uh, this plastic is never going to conform to your body. And the gun sits in here pretty tight. So you really need a tie down uh, because it takes fairly significant effort to draw that. You can see how far I'm pulling that. Uh, so the around the back strap and the tie down are probably imperative to be able to get a decent draw out of this holster, but they both work well. Uh, you can get a really good draw out of this holster. Um, and um, still be comfortable. That, there, so there's a couple of things I don't like, and let's talk about that. So you can see... And I'll take this off here in a second. But the first thing is this thing makes some noise uh, when you walk. So like these, these connections, you can hear that, I hope. Uh, they, they rattle a little bit. They're not, not quite as tight as I had hoped. Um, but let me take this off and I'll show you my biggest complaint and then I'll put it back on. So you can see the mounting point for the backside on the holster is right over the center axis of the gun, right? But on the front, it is on the outside, on the outboard side of the gun. So what that does is the center of gravity for the gun, at least on the back side, on the grip side, is uh, the pivot. It pivots, right? So you've created a pivot point. You're not over the center axis of the gun. You're on the outside of the gun, which causes the weight to pivot. And, and it causes the grip to stick out away from your body. Uh, I do not care for that. Now, I usually wear a big enough cover-up that that's not an issue. But, I mean, if this mounting point were moved over the center axis of the gun or inboard of the gun... Uh, center axis would let it hang straight. If you moved it inboard of the gun, uh, it would it would cause us the the weight or the, the the center of gravity to go and bring that grip in toward your body. So again, I wear a big enough cover up, and I don't necessarily care too much about printing. So not a huge deal, not a deal breaker for me, but it may be for someone else. Uh, and it, the other thing I noticed is, I mean, you can you can pull these tie downs pretty tight, and that tie down will help pull that pull that back in. But by the time you're done with that, you're pulling so hard up here that it gets uncomfortable on your shoulders. So um, I'm not a designer. Uh, you know, I don't know if gunfighters looked at this and said this is the only way this will work uh, or what. But 
Uh, to me, it would certainly be better if, if this pivot point or this mounting point was moved inboard of the gun and or over the, the center of gravity of the gun versus on the outside because it, it just wants it wants to drag that grip out away from your body. And while that's while that's great for getting a good grip on the gun, it's bad for concealment. And why do we carry shoulder holsters? We want to conceal a gun. So um, anyway, that is my honest review of the Gunfighters Inc. Spectre shoulder holster. I like it. I really do. Short of the two things we talked about, the rattling when I walk uh, and uh, the, the mounting point on the butt end of the holster that causes that grip. Uh, I mean, you can see how pronounced that is. Uh, that's, that's riding out quite a ways uh, away, from, away from my body and um, causes a little bit of concealment issues. Now, again, not for me because I usually wear a big enough cover-up. I'm a big dude. Um, well, not necessarily huge. I'm six foot 235-ish. And, um, you know, I usually wear a, a fairly decent size cover up like a fishing shirt, like a lightweight fishing shirt in the summer. And of course, the winter is no big deal because you wear a coat or a vest or whatever the case may be. But for some people, this could be a problem if you uh, are not wearing the right cover up. But as far as the holster goes, functionality and comfort, I really like it. I just, I would like to see that, that mounting point changed uh, to where it's, it's a little more friendly for concealment. But, uh, gun, again, Gunfighters Inc., quality stuff. I own one of their other holsters, the Ronin Outside the Waistband. I really like it a lot. And this is not a dig on uh, Gunfighters Inc. Not saying anything bad about them. Uh, actually, I, I like them. I, I think they make quality stuff. And if you're looking for a Kydex holster of some sort, give Gunfighters a look. They're not paying me. They ain't giving me nothing for free. Uh, I paid, I don't know, 185 bucks for this thing. Uh, and I've had, like I said, I had it about three or four weeks before surgery and just really didn't have a lot of time to play with it before then. And, but of course the last, you know, 42 days, I've had nothing but time on my hands. So, um, I've kind of, you know, as I walk around through the day, I kind of, I kind of been wearing it and, uh, seeing what the upsides and downsides are comfort wise. Uh, you know, I give it a five star. It's for being nylon and I'm a, I'm a leather guy for being nylon. It, it's really comfortable. I dig it. Um, makes a little noise. And, uh, that again, this mounting point that causes that grip to go out, I would like to see that changed. But, uh, anyway, honest review of the Gunfighters Inc. Spectre shoulder holster system and, uh, Sheriff Matt Oller. Don't forget to like, and subscribe Sheriff Matt Oller at Audrain County. Have a great day. Uh, bless you from East Central Missouri.